الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Welcome once again my dear viewers of Madani channel to another brand new episode of Articles of Faith Inshallah in today's episode we will be discussing a very important element of the Articles of Faith and that is the signs of the Day of Judgment There are many benefits and excellences of reciting the Rud and Salam upon the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and whereas there are Fazail, there are virtues of the one that recites, he will get so and so virtue, he will get this blessing, that blessings. There are also wa'id, which you can say uh, points of warnings for those that do not recite salat upon the Prophet. A hadith in Al Mu'jam al Kabir of Imam Tabarani states that the Prophet Muhammad states, the one who forgot to recite Salat upon me forgot his way to Jannah. Allahu Akbar. May we all be given the ability to recite as much Salat and Salam upon the Prophet and without forgetting, we recite the Rude Park, peace and blessings upon our Master. So with love and devotion, let's all recite the Rude Park upon him. Sallu ala al-Habib. Sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Dear viewers of Madrin channel, if you remember back the hadith of Jibra'il alayhi salatu wasalam, which we covered in episode number one as well. At the end of this hadith, which is found in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet sallallahu was asked as to regards to what are the signs of the day of judgment. This is an important aspect of religion to know about the signs of the day of judgment. Many signs have actually passed. There are many signs that are yet to come as well. So inshallah, in today's episode, we will be learning about the signs of the Day of Judgment. The earth, the skies, human, jinns, angels, everything will one day undoubtedly be perished. And only Allah Almighty will remain. But before that day, the day when the Qiyamah will establish the Day of Reckoning, there are many signs that will occur throughout this time. For example, there will be three earthquakes which will cause many people to be consumed by the earth. The earth will swallow them due to these earthquakes. One will occur in the east, one will occur in the west, and one will occur in the Arabian Peninsula. Another sign of the day of Qiyamah is that knowledge will be taken away. In other words, the scholars of Islam, the ulama, the possessors of knowledge, they will pass away from this world very swiftly, very quickly. This does not mean that the ulama will remain and the knowledge will vanish from their hearts. So there are some people that have this belief that the scholars will remain, but the knowledge will be lifted from the heart. So that is not the case. It's actually the scholars, the ulama, they will be taken away from this world, meaning that they will pass away. There will be an excess of ignorance. Ignorance will be in uh, excess. A lot of people will be away from knowledge. And unfortunately, this is a issue in today's day and age as well. This is one of the signs of the Yajma, which we can say is happening in front of us, that many people are away from knowledge, knowledge of the true Aqeedah, the true Islamic beliefs, and people end up falling into disbelief because of not knowing the true belief of Islam. There's knowledge which they are lacking in, in terms of aspects of Salah, of fasting, of Zakat. Many people are unaware of these rulings and these, uh, the, the rules of, related to these kind of things. So remember my dear viewers of Madrin channel, to learn knowledge is Fardul Ain. Every individual has to learn knowledge. And the Prophet Wasallam says, Talabul Ilmi, Faridatun ala kulli Muslim. That learning knowledge is Fard upon every Muslim. So me and you, we all need to learn knowledge. 
How much knowledge do we need to learn? Enough that whatever is fard upon us to do, we have to also learn about that as well. For example, it's fard upon us to pray salah. So now to learn about salah, the rulings related to salah is fard upon us as well. It's fard upon us to fast in the month of Ramadan. So to learn the rulings of fasting, what breaks a fast? When do we start the fast? When, when do we end the fast? What does kafara of the fast mean? So all these rulings are related to the fast. We should learn about them as well. The rules related to hajj. When hajj becomes fard upon you, then to learn about the rules of hajj is also fard upon you as well. The rules of zakat. When you become wealthy, sahib nisa which I'm guessing most uh, young adults, you know, young adults from, uh, especially those who are living in the European countries or in English countries or in uh, uh, well-off countries, a lot of the youth, they don't know about this, these rulings. They will be sahib nisab So to learn about when does a person become sahib nisab what are the rulings of zakat, when does one need to pay zakat, what is the, uh, the zakat in terms of the, of the year. So all of these things we need to learn about because zakat is further upon us. So like this, everything that we go into, for example, now someone might want to get married or go into business. So learning about marriage or learning about business is now for the them as well. And the first and foremost knowledge that we need to learn is knowledge about aqidah, about the Islamic belief. What beliefs we should have regarding Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what beliefs we should have in regards to the prophets, the books, the angels, heaven and hell. So all of these things we need to learn as well. That's very, it's very common that people believe in uh, things which are disbelief. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having bodily limbs. And this is unfortunately common amongst our communities that uh, these type of wrong uh, rulings or wrong beliefs about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is quite common, unfortunately. So we need to learn about our beliefs as a Muslim. Adultery will be in abundance. Like donkeys mate with one another without any shame, there will be no respect, there will be no modesty left between the young and the old. So people without any shame openly will commit fornication. The population of men will decrease and the population of women will increase. There will be one man for every 50 women. With the exception of the main Dajjal, there will be 30 other Dajjal and each of them will claim prophethood. Each of these people will claim to be prophets. And definitely there will be false prophets. They won't be true, they'll be liars. And Dajjal in Arabic means the person that deceives, the deceiver. So they would be deceiving people. And remember that the doors of prophethood are now closed. No one else can become a prophet after Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa There can be no other prophet. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi himself has said, La nabiyya ba'di. In the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, that the Prophet is a seal of prophethood. So there's no more prophets after Prophet Muhammad Some of these people who are known as the Ad-Dajjalun, the people who are uh, the liars, the people who are deceivers, those that claim prophethood, some of them have actually passed. For example, there was one person by the name of Musail Makazab, Tulayha bin Khuwaylid, Aswad Ansi, Sajjah, who was also uh, a female, but then also later accepted Islam. She denounced her prophethood and she accepted Islam. And it's a fundamental belief of a Muslim that there is no prophet after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu This is a categorical uh, aqidah issue that there is no prophet after Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And there will be more yet to come as well that will claim prophethood. There shall be an abundance of wealth and the river of Euphrates will unveil its treasures, forming mountains of gold. And now this point, my dear viewers on Madrin Channel, just recently in the news, there has come forth reports of the river Euphrates drying up. Now, Wallahu alam, the scholars are best to inform us as to if this is the same sign that the Prophet has told us, who has given us the information of the news of that the river Euphrates will dry and gold or mountains of gold will be revealed, will be unveiled. Lush vegetation and orchards, gardens, greenery. This will be prevalent in the Arabian deserts and rivers will then flow therein. So right now in the Arabian Peninsula, there's deserts, dry land, there's no rain and these kind of things. but 
there will come a time where there will be greenery, vegetation, lush green trees and plants that will grow and also rivers that will flow as well. So the time will come back when this will start to occur again. To remain firm on Islam will be as difficult as holding burning coal in one's hand. That's how difficult it will be to uh, carry on remaining firm on Islam. And people will visit the graveyard and wish that they were amongst the dead as well. They will visit the graveyards, they will see that people are in the state and they are, they are in the graves and they will wish that, Ya Allah, I be in that position as well. There will be no barakat in time, meaning that p time will pass very fast. Uh, a year will pass like a month, a month like a week, a day will pass so swiftly like something burns rapidly after catching fire. That's how fast time will feel. And nowadays, a lot of the people, the common public, they do say this, that, oh, you know, time flies. Well, I went to this, uh, I went to this area, went, to, went for this holiday, went for this work, and the time went so quickly. And this is happening nowadays, you know, we see that time, there's less barakah in time and time flies very fast. People will regard paying zakat as a burden and they will regard it as a penalty. So people will think that this is something that is a burden upon me, I have to do this, you know, and they'll feel heavy hearted in paying zakat. Ahmadiyya views on Madhuri Channel, just to talk, elaborate on the topic of zakat, zakat isn't a burden. In fact, it's, you can say, a blessing upon us that Allah has made zakat to purify our wealth. And just a small share, 2.5 percentage of our wealth, we need to pay in zakat. That's it. So for example, if you had a thousand pound, then it would only be 25 pound that you need to pay in zakat. A very minute amount that is, won't be a burden upon people. But unfortunately, a time will come when people will think that even paying this 2.5% will be a burden as well. People will study knowledge of Islam, knowledge of the deen, they will study ilm al deen, but not for the purpose of religion. They will have other motives or other intentions, not for the purpose of religion for the sake of Allah. Men will become subservient to their wives. Children will disobey and disrespect their parents. Allahu Akbar. This is a sign of Qiyamah which we are seeing in front of us. It's Bayna Yadeh, it's right in front of our faces. We can see that many people are disrespecting their parents, swearing at them to the fact where they're actually hitting them, abusing the parents, physically abusing them, mentally abusing them, verbally abusing them. And this is a prevalent evil that's within our society. We as Muslims need to realize that this is actually a sign of Qiyamah. We need to step away from this, move away from disrespecting our parents. People will socialize with their friends and shun off their parents, their fathers. People will be more considerate, more loving, more kind, more available to their friends, but they will shun off their fathers, their parents. This is prevalent as well. We see people will die for their friends. You know, I'll do it for my bro. You know, bros come first. But when the parent, when the mother asks that, beta, can you go to the shop and just get me these groceries? Oh, mom, why do you always have to ask me? Why is it always me for? Can't you go yourself? Can't this guy go? Can't him? Can't my other brother go? This is a, an issue. We give more preference to our friends than we give preference to our own parents. A sign of Qiyamah. People will shout in the Masajid. People will shout in the Masjid. Remember the Masjid is a sacred place, a place of tranquility, a place of peace, a place where people pray and do sajda. They prostrate in the court of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but it will become such a place where people will shout and raise their voices be disrespectful to the place of the prayers, the masjid. Music will become common and people will curse their predecessors and address them with disrespect. Wild animals will converse with humans and the tip of a whip and shoelace straps will also speak. They will relate to a person whatever happened in his house while he's in the market. Disreputable people who once had no clothes, that had no shoes to wear, 
they will boastfully live in big mansions. So people that were poor, people that were destitute, people that didn't even have any clothes or any shoes to wear, they will boastfully be living in big, big mansions. And then my dear viewers of Madrin channel, a very uh, big sign of the day of Qiyamah, and that is, which we touched upon previously, which is about a Dajjal, and this is the major, the Dajjal, the big Dajjal, and he is the one that will come before the day of Qiyamah and will be killed by Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu salam. So let's listen to his coming and what will happen when he comes. So with the exception of Makkah al and Madina al-Munawwara, Haramain al-Sharifain, with the exception of these two cities, the Jal will travel all over the world. And he will cover the whole world within 40 days. The first of the days of this 40 days will be equivalent of a year. The second day will be equivalent to a month. The third day will be equivalent to a week. And the rest of the days shall be of 24 hours each like they are currently. He will travel very swiftly like gusts of strong winds which steer the clouds. And his fitna, his corruption, it will be very prominent. He will have with him a garden and a huge fire. And he will refer to the garden as Jannah. So with him will be a garden which he will refer to as Jannah. And with him will be a fire which he will refer to as Jahannam. And these will accompany him wherever he goes. And that what looks like a garden will in actual fact be the hellfire. And that what looks like the hellfire will in actual fact be the garden. So he will be deceiving people and he will show them that this is a garden but in actual fact is hellfire. And he will show that this is hellfire but in actual fact it will be a garden. And he will claim first to be Prophet Isa. He will claim to be Prophet Isa. And then he will further his claim and lie and say Allah that he is God. Allah. And he will enter those who believe in him into his garden, which in actual fact will be the hellfire. And those that reject him, those that do not believe in him, he will throw them into the hellfire, which in actual fact will be a garden. He will bring back to life barren land and grow lush vegetation. So land that is deserted, that there's no plants growing there, there's no vegetation there, there's no fruits growing trees there. He will make that area lush with vegetation, with fruits, with trees. He will cause it to rain. He will cause livestock to become healthy. When he enters a barren land, those that are buried there will rise and follow him like a swarm of bees. He will show others many stalling signs, which in reality will be illusion trickery. And these illusions shall have no bearing with reality. Thus, when a person will leave a place, the person living there shall be left with nothing. And he will try to enter the city of Makkah al and Madinat al but angels that are appointed at the gates will turn him away. In Madinat al three tremors, three earthquakes will be felt. And because of these three earthquakes, people that were in Medina, that were actually munafiq, they, they pretend to be Muslim, but in actual fact in their hearts they were followers of Dajjal and disbelievers, they will flee from Medina to Munawwara and join Dajjal due to the, the, the three tremors that will be felt. The words Kaf, Fa, Ra, these will be depicted showing the words Kafir on his forehead. And this will only be visible for believers, people who are Muslim, they will be able to see this. But people who are disbelievers, people who are in the army of Dajjal, they won't be able to see this on his forehead. After traveling the world, Dajjal will then reach Syria, in which where Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu salam will descend on the Jami' Masjid, the menorah of the Jami' Masjid in Damascus, Syria. So Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu salam will come, his second coming. And definitely this arrival of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu salam will happen, will come. It will be close to the early morning and the iqamah for Salatul Fajr will be made. And Sayyidina Imam Mahdi radiallahu ta'ala anhu, which we inshallah after this we're going to go into a bit more detail of. He will ask Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu salam, Prophet Isa, that to come and lead the jama'at. But Sayyidina Isa, Prophet Isa will command him that the Adhan was read for you, the Iqamat was read for you, so you go forth and lead the prayer, O Imam Mahdi. 
So he will then lead the prayer in congregation. And at this time, the jar will start to dissolve, just like salt dissolves in water. He will smell the fragrance of Sayyidina Isa والسلام, and he will start to dissolve. To the extent that the fragrant breath of Sayyidina Isa والسلام, Prophet Isa will reach far and wide and the jar will then start to flee. And Sayyidina Isa والسلام, will then pursue him and will throw a sphere at him and he will then die. Prophet Isa والسلام, will then remove and break the religious artifacts which are false. All the people of the book who survive will accept Islam and bring Iman on him. The people of Ahl Kitab, they will then bring Iman on him. And at this time, there will only be one religion and that will be the religion of ad al-Islam. And there will only be one madhab by the name of Madhab of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. And at this time, children, the time will be so luxurious, so amazing that children will be playing with snakes. Goats will be playing with lions. They will graze together. And Sayyidina Isa والسلام, will remain on the earth for 40 years. He will marry, he will have children, and then he will taste death, and then he will be made to lay in the grave next to Sayyidina Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the Rosai Anwar. Sayyidina Imam Mahdi radiallahu ta'ala an, a little bit about his description. So his name will be the same as the Prophet sallallahu name. His father's name will be the same as the name of the Prophet sallallahu father, Abdullah. And his mother's name will be also the same as Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mother's name, Amina. And he will be from the family, a descendant of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam from the Ahlul Bayt. He will be a Sayyid. And then when the time when the whole world is in kufr, is in disbelief, this is before the coming of Sayyidina Isa Alayhi Salatu Wasallam. During this time, uh, Islam will come into the blessed lands of the Haramain al-Sharifain. And the Abdal, the Awliya, the pious saints of Allah that will be in Makkah al Mukarramah, they will be performing tawaf during the month of Ramadan and they will notice that that person is Imam Mahdi. So they will ask for uh, pledging allegiance, bayah, from Imam Mahdi. And at this time, Imam Mahdi will refuse, he will say no. But then a voice will be heard saying, هذا خليفة الله المهدي فاسمعوا له وعطيعه That this is Mahdi, the Khalifa of Allah. Listen to what he says and obey his commands. So this voice will be heard saying that this is the Khalifa of Allah, Mahdi. So listen to him وعطيعه and obey his commands. So immediately hearing this voice from the unseen, the awliya, the abdal, they will then pledge allegiance on the hands of Sayyidina Imam Mahdi radiallahu ta'ala an, and then they will journey to Syria where the, the scenario which I just mentioned about Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam coming, a Dajjal being killed, that, will, uh, that event will then occur there. After the killing of Dajjal, it will be told to Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, a group of people will soon emerge and these people are known as the two tribes of Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Gog and Magog. These two tribes will appear and they will emerge after all the Muslims go on to Mount Sinai, Mount Tur. Their population will be very large and they will pass through Buhaira Tabariya, which is a 10 mile stretch. And the first group from amongst them that will come out, they will drink from the river there to such an extent that the next group that comes, they will see the river and they will think that there was not even a single drop of water in this river for a very long time. That's how much they will drink. They will kill and, and destroy everything that comes in their path causing mayhem. And after all the killings and massacres, they will say that we have killed those on the earth. So now let's point our arrows to the sky and kill those are in the skies, those are in the heavens. So at this time, they will then shoot their arrows to the sky. And with the command of Allah, those arrows will come back filled with blood. And then they will say that we have killed the people of the heavens as well. They will assume that. At this time, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, they will be facing very harsh conditions on the mountain, Mount Sinai. And there will be shortage of food to the extent that a cow's head will be more valuable than a hundred Ashrafi gold coins. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu wasalam will then make dua and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will create a worm, a insect that will kill these people. And then what will happen is that birds will come and take their bodies away 
and their fighting uh, artillery, the bows and arrows and things like this, they, that will be then set alight and burnt, and it will burn for continuously for seven years. After this, the earth will experience refreshing rains. So the earth, it will rain upon the earth, and the earth will then refresh to such an extent that fruit and vegetation will start to grow again, and food will be prevalent. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will command that the earth to open up his bounties. And so much so that the entire, an entire congregation, entire jama'ah, a group of people will be able to eat one single anar, one single pomegranate. And 10 people will be able to sit under the shade of this pomegranate. And everything will be in abundance. Milk will be in abundance. In fact, it said that a single camel will suffice for an entire congregation. The milk of a cow will suffice for an entire clan. And the milk of a goat will be sufficient for an, an entire household. And then after this, a huge cloud of mysterious smoke will appear, causing darkness to fall upon the face of the earth. Then a creature by the name of Dabatul Ard, this will come. It will have the staff of Sayyidina Musa والسلام, and the ring of Sayyidina Sulaiman والسلام, and it will mark on the forehead those that are believers and those that are disbelievers. Moving on, the, the sun will also rise from the west. And when this occurs, the doors of Toba will now be closed. And anyone that accepts Islam after this time, their Islam will not be accepted. After the passing away of Sayyidina Isa alayhi salatu salam, 40 years after this, a breeze will occur, which will be felt by Muslims. And all the Muslims will then pass away due to this breeze. And on the earth, only disbelievers will remain. And when disbelievers will remain, at that time, some of them will be doing their daily chores, some of them will be cooking food, some of them will be planting uh, trees or planting vegetation. At that time, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be given to Sayyidina Israfil alayhi salatu salam, and he will then blow the sword, the trumpet. And the sound will be first a low sound and gradually it will go such a high pitch that it will make people unconscious and eventually make them pass away, make them die. And at this point, everything in the world will then perish. Even the angel that blew the trumpet, Sayyidina Israfil alayhi salatu salam, even he will die as well. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will remain alone. And Allah will say, Limanil mulk al yawm, translation, whose supreme rule is there today? And then in reply to this, he himself will say, Lillahi al-Wahid al-Qahar, that it is only the supreme rule of Allah, the one Allah, the most powerful. And then this day of Qiyamah will occur. Dear viewers of Madri Channel, this was a, a synopsis of the signs of the Day of Judgment. Inshallah, in next episode, we will be covering the Day of Judgment, the final episode of Articles of Faith covering the Days of Judgment. Until next time, keep watching Madani Channel. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ta'ala ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah, help me understanding of Islam. Allah, help me understanding of Islam.